Hi everyone, this is George Cow, and I'm happy to be here with Tessa Stowe. Uh, we're going to be talking about happiness today. And let me first say hi to Tessa. Hi, Tessa. Hi, George. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Good to have you Hi, here. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and what we're hearing is, uh, you might hear some birds because Tessa lives in a beautiful place. She lives in Bali, uh, Indonesia. But let me kind of read you her bio uh, so you all can, can have a sense of her, her background and then we'll go from here. So, Tessa Stowe calls herself the happiness pathfinder. She teaches people the essential life skill of happiness so that they're healthier, less stressed, and live longer. And she got to be doing this because she was, and she considered herself the complete opposite. And she realized yes. that she needed to take action before it was too late. And Tessa, you're originally from New Zealand, and now you live in Bali. Um, yes. Do you want to say a little bit about how, what got you there? <laughs> it's a, the abbreviated version is January of last year, I just had this um, voice in my head telling me that I needed to go away somewhere and think. So I listened to my voice, and I decided Bali is the perfect place to go and think. So I went online, found a place to stay, which is the resort actually opposite to this one. And I arrived and then the next morning I got up and I thought, well, I'll just walk into town or village. And I came out and there was a road to the left, which, we, which was the obvious road because it went up to the main road. And then there was a road to the right, it wasn't really a road, it's a path to the right. And there were chickens wandering around. So I thought, I think I'll follow those chickens. <laughs> so I followed the chickens down what I then thought was maybe this is someone's driveway. And I thought, well, they can always throw me out. But I kept following these chickens. And sure enough, it was a driveway to someone's house. But it was also the back of the resort next door. And to cut a long story short, I then met the owner of the resort. And within a few minutes of meeting him, he said to me, Oh, Tessa, you might want to come and live here. I'll show you an apartment. And I thought, this guy is weird. We've only just met. He wants to show me an apartment. But I'm not rude, so I thought, I'll humor him. So I went and looked at his apartment with just being polite. Anyway, the long and the short of it, here I am now living in that apartment. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. wow. Worked out. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, yeah. I love it. I really, really love it. And I, I always enjoy seeing the, the photos you post uh, of your life there uh, on your Facebook. So be sure to check it yeah. out as we're watching. Uh, I will link to Tessa's uh, websites and Facebook and things like that in the notes. Oh, and videos. great! Yes. So Thank let's you. get into this topic of happiness. You know, this is something that you're you're passionate to help others with, and. And why do you think it's so important? I mean, yes, we all want to be happy, um, but you're looking at it beyond just, oh, I want to be happy. But what, why is it important in your, in your perspective? Well, it's, it's essential for your survival. Mm. I, you know, from personal experience, after my husband died from brain cancer. Oh, wow. and, and it was just, first of all, having the brain cancer was horrendous. But then after he died, my you know, any happiness I had just got sucked right out of me. I was, um, I was stressed out. I, I, I didn't want to get out of bed. I, my health deteriorated. I got shingles on my face, on my eye specifically, which can make you go blind. I got severe bursitis in my shoulder. I could hardly move. I was drinking too much wine. Um, I had all these thoughts of guilt. I mean, I, I was just on a downward spiral to not a good place. And Essentially, I was um, I was tricked into happiness, back into happiness. But I realised I realised now, from 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 where I've been and where I am now, I've, I've realised if you know happiness is essential for your survival. If I'd kept going the way I was going, I would have ended up with some terminal illness, because it, it's it's interesting because we're just not taught this stuff at all. In fact, that's I've become passionate about happiness and and what it is and why and the wherefores and how we can actually um, 
become happy because I actually think happy, well, I know actually happiness is a skill. It's actually an essential life skill that you can learn. And the more you practice it, the, the better you get at it. So, but basically why I say it's essential is because we basically have, George, we have two sets of emotions or two buckets we can lump our emotions into. So we've got like um, positive emotions, negative emotions, or we've got safe emotions, unsafe, stressed, unstressed, happy, not happy. So if I gave you a list of emotions, it would be really easy to pop them into a bucket, which bucket. So, and the thing is, what's important though, and it's not really well known is, uh, and we're not educated on, is that these emotions uh, in our minds convert into chemicals in our body. Okay, it's that whole mind-body connection, George, which I know that you've, you know, very focused on yourself. But the thing is, they, they are converted into chemicals into, into your body, and then the chemicals cause specific things to happen. So if you're feeling... Um, and what are some negative, of the, well, like what's one or two of those chemicals that, uh, that we might recognize? Oh, well, it's more, so you can go down, in fact, I've actually sort of put together a list of particular emotion, what are the, some of the chemicals, you know, like oxytocin, you know, the, the hug one yeah. um, is, is, you know, that's a really uh, well-known one, for example. But the, at a, it's more at a high level, at a high level, which mm -hmm. is easy to understand, is that when you've got, when you're having negative um, or unsafe emotions, it converts into chemicals which say to your body, switch your body into survival mode. And what that means is take away energy that's focused on building your immune system, take away energy that's focused on growth and repair, and put it all into surviving the threat. Put it all into running away and surviving the, the saber-toothed tiger. So your heart beats goes, your heart beat goes faster, your blood pressure goes up, you know, blood rushes to your extremities, uh, you get a flush of cortisol so that you, you know, you don't feel the pain when you're running away from the saber-toothed tiger. So all your energy, the key point is that energy is taken away from growth and repair, taken away from your immune system. And let's face it, that makes sense because what's the point in having growth and repair and what's the point in having um, your immune system if you don't survive the saber-toothed tiger. So, so on the other side of it, when you have positive emotions or emotions of feeling safe, the chemicals that it produces in your body are ones that basically say to your body, okay, it's time to thrive and be happy. It's time to, to repair, you know, it's time to build your immune system. So you all have all those really good things happen to your body and they're all triggered because of these, you know, happy, positive emotions. So now, um, the thing is, if you're stressed, if you're in that stress state for too long, and I was in that, after my husband died, I was in that stress state for, you know, a, a long time. I mean, I was living in bed at one stage. I mean, why get up? You know, no reason. Uh, no energy either. So if you're in that stress state for too long, obviously, because your immune system, your immune system breaks down because there's no energy put on it, or very little, your organs start to break down and, and you get sick. So I guess, so it's interesting because stress-related diseases now are the number one cause of death. And, and um, seven, so some say 70%, some say 90%, but between 70 and 90%, in other words, a big number of doctor's visits are related to stress. So in other words, we seem to be living in this stress state most of the time, which is really not good for your survival. Um, so the alternative is instead of living in a stress state, how about living in a happiness state? And the really good news is that you can learn um, the skill of happiness. You can learn how to generate those happy emotions so you can learn how to generate happy emotions so that your immune system is 
mm. is building up and functioning and you're yeah. in growth and repair. So that's why I say, you know, it's an essential life. Happiness is an essential life skill if you want to be happier, first mm. of all, if you want to be healthier, if you want to be less stressed and live longer because yeah. they're all they're all connected. It's, still, it's this whole mind, yes. body. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious if somebody says, well, I'm not happy. I'm stressed out because there are things to be stressed out about in my life. Yes, yes, you yes. Know, I'm, I, I have income issues. I have health yes. issues. I have maybe family issues. I have time, not enough time. What, what, do, you say, what do you say to that? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. I could, I could, <laughs> I could sit here in Bali, and if I wanted to, I could get myself really stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> about mm. stuff. So, absolutely, we all have issues in life, yeah. uh, which cause us stress. And 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 I and don't. And it's not. It's important. It's really important, actually, not to deny them or suppress them, but to acknowledge them, and then do what I call, even though you're feeling stressed, anxious, uh, even even depressed, you can still do happiness exercises, which are like a, um, I call, they're like a brain hack because they're so easy to do and they're so, they don't require much energy because let's face it, if you're really stressed out and if you're depressed, you don't, your energy just goes bleh as well. So, but the cool thing about these happiness exercises, they don't take much energy, they don't take much time and they're kind of like a, they're like a trick. They're like a brain hack because they, they'll actually just, You'll do them. You'll generate a uh, a happy happy emotion, and and you'll generate that um, that chemical reaction in your body. And and if you do these happiness exercises correctly, you'll you'll actually just feel good, and you want to keep doing them. It's kind of like um, yeah, they're, they're exercises. If you keep doing them, it's just amazing the impact they have. So yes, acknowledge the fact that you're feeling stressed. Acknowledge the fact that you're anxious. Just but but. Do the, do the exercises. And most of the happiness exercises that I, that I coach and teach are 60 seconds or less. But even though they're 60 seconds or less, they have a huge roll-on effect because once you do some of, the, some of them and you think, wow, that was great, it sort of builds a momentum all of its own. You just have to be, you just have to get started. And, you know, that's why I make them so, they're so easy. And, in fact, I work with... Uh, B.J. Fogg, who's the world's uh, leading expert in creating habits. And I use his methodology for all, for all the happiness exercises and then specifically when you want to turn some of the happiness exercises into habits so that you just do them automatically. Um, yeah. That's so amazing. Yeah, that's, that's it, it is. And maybe you can give us uh, one or two examples of what a happiness exercise looks like. Well, one that I do every day, <clears throat> and this is it's this one is actually a habit as opposed to a well. When I say difference between an exercise and a habit is exercise you may just do once off, or but a habit is that you just do it automatically. One of the ones I do is is basically when I wake up in the morning, I put my feet on the ground, I stand up and say, "Today is going to be a great day." Yeah. So I start. That's how I start how I start my day, you know, it's amazing. So that's, that's a habit, a great exercise, a great, ha a quick happiness exercise is, well, I, when I teach happiness exercises, George, I start off, there's three distinct camps or stages. The first is happiness in the moment, then there's happiness in self, and then there's happiness in relationships. And I start off in happiness in the moment because that's the easiest place to start. You're going to get results really quickly. And the thing is, you know, we have, we're here in a body to, the reason we're in a body is so that we can experience the world, so that we can like experience ice cream, for example. That's why we're here in a body. And yet we seem to have become disconnected. We're, you know, we're on our, we're on our phones. <laughs> You know, on social media, we're everywhere except here in the moment. And in the moment, there is just so much 
joy and excitement. I mean, where I live, oh my goodness, I go out of my apartment, I just just walk this beautiful flowers. As you, you know, you heard the birds, you can probably hear the birds chirping. But the only way you can um, get happiness from that is actually if you are present to it. <laughs> so, because those birds could be chirping all they like, but if I'm on my phone or I'm thinking in my head or doing other stuff, just completely miss it. So that's why I start with happiness in the moment because you get huge, you know, huge bang for your buck. And, and a great way to be, oh, happiness in the moment. Oh my goodness, ice cream. Actually, ice cream is not that easy to get here, but uh, it's like, take ice cream. You can eat ice cream or you can experience ice cream. Mm. <laughs> it's a big difference. In fact, I did a very funny video on uh, experiencing ice cream. And this could be with any be food, actually, right? Any it's, food, it's any, any food, food. You know, it's like the very any next food. food we eat. Yeah. Yes, you can just sit there eating it, eat, 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 and just eating and, and not even looking on your phone and not even, and somebody said, oh, uh, at the end of it, what did that taste like? And you've got no idea. <laughs> or you can experience it. Um, and I had one of the most amazing food experiences of my life forever, hands down, when I'm in Cambodia and a few years ago, we went to a blind restaurant. The waiters were blind. And uh, we had to go into a dark, dark room. And when I say dark, you couldn't even see your hand in front of you. And, and our blind waiter had the eyes. So he served us the whole meal, the drinks, everything. And uh, that we weren't being told what we were eating. We, we you know, had to check whether you wanted vegetarian or normal or whatever. So it was all fine food. But you had to, you, had, you experienced it. Like suddenly food had sound. Food had like, you know, you're feeling it with your fingers to try and work out because you're trying to work out what the food was. And then the taste and the sound and, oh my goodness, it was just amazing because that's what I call experiencing food and the guy that I was with um, who I met on this trip I mean we still to this day <clears throat> talk about that amazing experience and it's so it's, there's so many of these experiences you just we just need to learn and it's a skill that's why I say happiness is a skill it's an essential life skill that you can learn you can just learn to do these things and you suddenly it becomes who you are and yes, you'll still have times of stress and fear and anxiety, but you'll just go, oh, yep, that's it. And you'll and you won't deny them, you won't suppress them, but they'll carry they'll you know they'll carry with you in your suitcase as you still look on and look at the flowers and hear the birds and experience food and and suddenly, um, George, I don't know if you've heard about the black dot, white dot. But it's essentially, if I if I had a black dot in front of a piece of paper you'd look at the black you'd say mm -hmm. describe the paper you'd describe the black dot mm -hmm. you would ignore the rest of it mm -hmm. the white yeah. or the white space right so right this is all about training your mind mm -hmm. really training your mind to look at all the white space while acknowledging there still is the black dot yeah, it's a way of life really wow uh, so so that's interesting you you have these three kind of um segments of in the moment kind of like you start there and, yes. then, and then you learn happiness in the self. Yes. And what yes. is that? Mean? It's self. Ah, happiness in self. Oh my goodness. Happiness in self. Well, see, what is self? And happiness in self, in self is basically two parts because we have this body, we have a fabulous body that we are here. With. You know, our body is our best friend. I mean, it goes everywhere with us. It's with us from birth until death. It's with us through thick and thin. I mean, it does all these amazing things with us, for us, without us even asking. So, yeah, so that's a really important part of us is our body. So we have our body and we have our, our self or our spirit, our essence, our personality that lives in the body. So happiness in self is basically... There's two subcategories. It's happiness in your body 
In other words, loving your body, um, un unconditionally loving your body. Um, and when you think of your body, thinking, feeling joy and gratitude, and then with yourself, it's just happiness in yourself. So when you think of yourself, you just think, wow, I am enough. I'm amazing. I'm special. So it's really just transforming. Happiness in self is about transforming that relationship you have with your body and yourself into one of unconditional love and just gratefulness and awe and I am enough and I am amazing. Yeah, that makes, I that love, makes sense. I love yes. happiness and self. And then, of course, that makes sense to then happiness and relationship because yes, oh my goodness, you have to have yes. the foundation of happiness within yourself before you can you can be happy yes. in a relationship in a sustainable Precisely. way. Precisely, and also yeah. the other thing is by going through happiness in self, and the, the orders are very um, there's a re, you know as you you're saying to see the the reason once you build up happiness in self, which builds up your self esteem, your self confidence. By the time you get to happiness and relationships, certain people are going to be really attracted to you. Certain people aren't, but you're going to be more selective about who you hang out with <laughs> because let's face it, George, there are some, uh, let's say not nice people or toxic people or, and then you, you just realize that, wow, it's just not, they're not good for me. And you don't hang out with those people anymore. You become a lot more selective because you are aware of what it's doing to you. To, to you, your body, chemically. You know, people can chemically make you sick, you know, once you understand all these things. So it just changes the dynamics. And, <clears throat> you, and when I say relationships, it's not just relationships with, like, your inner circle. It's the relationship you have with people you interact with every day. People, I have a lady I buy fish from on the side of the road. Uh, <laughs> and we have... She doesn't speak a word of English, and I'm trying to learn some Bahasa. But, you know, we have a laughing, joking relationship. I talk to everybody. I've got a friend who's just come to live here recently, um, Sandra. And she came back the other day, and she said, oh, Tessa, I went, walked into town, village, and she said, I found myself talking to everybody like you do. <laughs> she said, I never used to do that. But it's so much fun. You kind of like... Because you've been through happiness and self and happiness in the moment, you kind of get over yourself, you know, and you just start to see the wonder in everything and the wonder in everybody and, and you just chat to people and they chat back and it's just like amazing. Yeah, that that's, sounds, like, sounds like heaven, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so how can people work with you? People are watching this, they're like, wow, um, what is it that uh, you can offer to somebody watching this? Kind of, um, yeah, what do you, what do you have uh, to take to the next step? Yep, absolutely. Well, in January of next year, I'm going to be running a And just, mini just to be clear, it's January 2020, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, sorry, January 2020. In fact, about three times a year I do, I run a mini class series on the essential life skill of happiness so you can be happier, healthier, less stressed and live longer. So, yeah, that's about three times a year. Next one is in January 2020. So the best way to be notified of that is to uh, get on my email list. But what I suggest you do, though, is download my Yes to Happiness Roadmap, which basically gives you a, a high-level roadmap for happiness. And that way we'll, you'll have the roadmap, plus we'll get connected. So the way to get that uh, roadmap is to go to yes to happiness roadmap.com so yes to happiness roadmap.com great get that roadmap and that way we it's got all my contact info in there as well that way we'll we'll we will stay connected sounds great yeah i'll put the link in the notes of the video but it's yes to to yes to happiness roadmap.com precisely thank you Thank you, Tessa, for your work and for being an embodiment of what you talk about. Yeah. Oh, no, it makes me very happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I hope this, this video brings happiness to others as well. Thank you. So, thanks, thank for, you. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Thanks for being here. All right. Talk to you soon.